Kids First. And today, I have the pleasure of speaking with both Michael Gotten and Tim Walker about the new miniseries, Prehistoric Planet 2, which debuted globally May 22nd, 2023. Michael Gutton is the creative director and executive producer at BBC's Natural History Unit, known for masterpieces as One Life, Africa, Planet Earth, and others, which bring the natural world to global audiences. Tim Walker is a director and series producer known for his work on Ice Age Giants, Ed Stafford, Left for Dead, and more. Today, we're talking with them about Prehistoric Planet 2. Welcome to the show. It's great. Hi. Great to be with you. Yeah, Let's great get to started. Cool. Mr. Gutton, this show is highly educational, and we learned so much about our ancient past from the series. How closely did you have to work with paleontologists in making the series? How close? Well, I mean, that's as Tim, my, Tim and I both say, I mean, they are, that's where it all starts. You know, we're going back in time to tell stories about these extraordinary creatures. Of course, they don't exist now. So the only way we can find out anything about what they might have been like, how they lived, what sort of behavior they had, is by looking at what they left behind. So that's the paleontologists are our kind of guides. There are experts who tell us what evidence there is. And then we use that to interpret that and and recreate and bring those animals back to life. So no, paleontology, absolutely the, the heart of the whole story. I imagine it's difficult to recreate the past based on scientific evidence and some inferences. What were some of the challenges you encountered in making this show? One of the things we like to think is the series is like taking people on safari. It's just back in time on a safari with those paleontologists as the guides. Now, of course, like you say, trying to recreate it is really challenging and trying to get the movements of the animals right, trying to get them looking as if they're real. Because of course, all the animals are created in CGI by using loads and loads of computers. So we spend ages working with the paleontologists to work out what the animals look like, then we work out how they move, then working with specialists in terms of behavior and people that are very used to filming animals, we work out what kind of behavior they would do and how we would film it. And of course, one of the things that we want people to think when they're watching it is that we have really been back in time. And so that means that every time we see an animal, we filmed it in a way as if we were really there. Now in CGI, you can put the camera anywhere, can't you? You could fly over a dinosaur's head or between its legs, but in real life, you'd never do that. And so we've used the same constraints that you'd have to do if you're filming a T-Rex for real. Like imagine filming a T-Rex for real. If you were near it, it could bite you or it could kill you, it could eat you. So you'd have to be a really long way away. And that's the same for lots of animals. But then sometimes you can get close with small animals. And it's through working with people like Mike and the other producers in the Natural History Unit that we know the kind of, of limitations that we can push to when we're... So that's one of the biggest challenges. Prehistoric yeah. Planet 2 highlights five new habitats with incredible biodiversity. Can you share with us a favorite habitat or episode of the series? I did like the this. It's probably easy to say which sequence I like best. So the the last sequence of the opening episode, which has got these two amazing pterosaurs, these these huge flying reptiles, size of a small airplane, and they come down onto the ground and do this wonderful courtship dance, which I think is shows another side of a predator. You know, I've spent lots of my life filming real animals and. You know, you see lots of action and predators hunting and all that stuff, but sometimes the most exciting, the most interesting things are when animals are doing different sorts of behavior. And as Tim was saying, of course, filming that, you, I hope when you watch that sequence, it feels like you're there witnessing it as if we'd filmed it. That's on a tiny little island. Now, if you were really filming those animals, and I hope you think we were, you can't get very far away from them. And they're really dangerous because, you know, their, be their, their bills are six feet long and they could, you know, they could eat you just like that. But if you know about animals, when they're courting each other, when they're trying to get a get ready to mate, they don't think about hunting. They they take that they they suddenly become much more gentle, much safer. So we could say to ourselves, right now on this island, we can get close to them all the time. They're in that mating behavior; it'll be safe. Of course, what you worry about is when they stop mating and then they turn around and say, ah, there's a camera in there. Maybe I could eat him. Then you have to be a bit more careful. Get on the boat and get away. This show is truly a masterpiece filled with so much excitement and adventure. I'm curious how long it took to make the series. Um, the whole thing 
took about four and a half years to make both seasons. The second season, so Prehistoric Planet 2, took about three years to make. But Mike's original idea was over 12 years ago, and it took almost like seven, seven or eight years to get everything in place before we could finally start making it. So the moral of the story is, if you have an idea, if it doesn't happen straight away, it doesn't matter because it'll happen at some point if yeah. you want to make it happen enough. Can you explain in summary just what went into making the highly detailed CGI for the show? If you ask me all those 12 years ago, how, what would, how would this have been to make? I would never have known how complicated and how challenging it has been to do. But as Tim said, I've made many, many, many wildlife films in my life. This has been one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done because who else, you know, what, what greater fun than be able to take audiences back to a world where the most amazing animals that have ever lived and make them feel as if they're with them, as if they're really watching them doing their extraordinary things. That, that's been the joy of it. Was there a great risk in using so much animation for this series? We knew we could do it. We were very confident that we'd be able to bring the planet back to life. And as you say, there's so many different animals and not just dinosaurs. And that was one of the things we wanted to do was show the richness of life. You know, if you if you go to uh, any great wilderness and you see animals together, you don't just see one type of animal, do you? And it was the same in prehistoric times. The dinosaurs were undoubtedly the rulers, but there was the pterosaurs in the sky. There was all the uh, marine reptiles in the seas. And there was loads of other things as well. There was the mammals, there was birds, there was fish, there was snakes. There was relatives of crocodiles. And so we brought them all to life to paint this really rich, diverse environment. Thank you both for joining me today. I've been talking with Michael Gunton and Tim Walker about the new documentary series, Prehistoric Planet 2, which debuts May 22nd, 2023 on Apple TV+. This is Dominic DiGravio reporting for Kids First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to see more reviews and interviews from me and my amazing teammates. Catch you next time.